Creativity changes the everyday. Creativity is beautiful. Creativity is active. Creativity is freedom. Alpha NEX5 debut. Sony. The tranquility of the Cocos Keeling Islands today gives little hint of their colourful past, their human dramas and tragedies, or the many different rulers who've controlled them. From the first settlement in 1826 by English merchant Alexander Hare, through decades of rule by the Clooney's Ross dynasty, most island inhabitants were reported to have had little freedom or contact with the outside world. The Clooney's Ross dynasty even featured on an ABC series, with for many years the islands a powerhouse of copper production, with all resources and workers devoted to coconut growing and processing. Apart from disruptions caused by cyclone damage, the industry only ceased operating in 1987, but the abundant coconut palms throughout the Cocos Keeling Islands still bear testament to the extent of the trade. Two world wars saw the islands become targets because of their strategic position in the Indian Ocean, including on the 9th of November 1914, the islands becoming the site of the Battle of Cocos, one of the first naval battles in World War I, when the German cruiser SMS Emden was destroyed by HMAS Sydney. From 1944 to 1946, the tranquil islands came under military administration and buzzed with activity. They were home to thousands of military personnel, and this map goes some way to explaining their previous and even current strategic military importance to Australia. Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip visited Cocos Keeling Islands in 1954 and were accompanied by John Cecil Clooney's Ross returning to their ship. And the people of Cocos Keeling Islands voted to become part of Australia in 1984, with the remote atoll now an internationally significant habitat for wildlife and a faraway paradise for tourists seeking that something a little bit different. Check out the Clooney's Ross family tree and join me as I chat with John George Clooney's Ross, who still lives on Cocos Keeling Islands. So John Clooney's Ross, now you're the descendant of the Clooney's Ross family that basically, um, if you like, set up Cocos Island, you know, and, uh, and started it all. So why don't you take me very quickly back to the beginning and say, well, how did it all happen and how did your um, ancestors get here? There's uh, more of a, we're economic refugees from Scotland, I guess, you know, starting off from Shetland, um, uh, brothers, uh, seafarers, uh, ship's captains. Yeah. And they used to do um, business on their own accounts and, and eventually spread as far east, I think, as Hong Kong. Wow, okay. So what uh, what sort of time was that? What sort of years? That's a couple, uh, 250 years ago. 250 wow, years ago. okay. And then so at some point somebody realised they could grow coconuts here, yeah? Now the idea, I think the original idea was just to set up a trading base because as you, you set off from, say, Singapore last call, come through the Straits, yeah. you'd have done a fair bit of sailing and you'd have used up a quarter of your water. Oh, okay. Either you could pick up more water here or if we get more trade goods and then go around the Horn. Yeah. Um, but they never quite worked out. And while we're here, there's a big coconut, so you might as well do yeah. that too. So who was living here at the time? That was Cocos Malay people then, I no, suppose, no, was no, it? No. Nobody? Ladies. Okay. So pick up water here, then somebody realised they could actually grow coconuts here and it all went from there, yeah? Yeah, the coconuts, you know, are a bit hand to mouth for a long time. They, they peak probably between the wars. Yeah. When everyone wanted the glycerin out of it, but um, yeah, yeah, they're, they're very uh, labour intensive to peak, and, yeah. uh, and the industrial processes that required are, are quite intensive. Yeah, uh, and there's cheaper, cheaper things to grow now. Yeah. So then, um, your family lived in the house um, in Oceania, was it, yeah. on Home Island? Okay. So do you remember living there? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. As a child. Okay. You sound like a real Aussie bloke though, I mean I just had this impression I was going to meet somebody from Scotland and it was like, and I'm going, here's an Aussie bloke, you know? No, um, I spent some time in England but yeah. uh, that's, that's a while back and uh, yeah, I'm, just, I'm pretty, pretty Aussie I guess. Okay, cool. So um, tell me, in terms of what you do now, you've got a clam farm that yep. you're having some difficulties with in terms of the regulatory side of it and yep. stuff like that, what else do you do? Yeah, how much money you got? <laughs> you know, uh, Good one. We, uh, 
explosives, fireworks, ditch yeah. digging, though I don't do a lot of that anymore. Okay. Um, I don't like shovels too much. Uh, <laughs> uh, what else do we do? The excavator, operator, forklift. Yeah, okay, whatever so whatever needs, to whatever needs to be done. But your, your passion... Driver, Master 5, okay. whatever. You're passionate about these islands though, aren't you? Oh, yeah. So you live, breathe and sleep the Cocos Islands yeah. and, and everything it's all about. So do you, have you got um, descendants? Oh yeah, yeah, I've got Jack, my oldest boy, he's on island, my little boy. Oh, I met Jack, yeah. And um, I've got two girls, they're, they're floating around the Mediterranean or around Europe somewhere. Wow, okay. So do you think they'll come back here? Girls historically don't return, boys yeah. have a better chance of sticking yeah. in. Yeah, okay. So if you were given a blank sheet of paper, right, as a canvas and said, right, okay, here's the future of the Cocos Islands, what would you, what would you like to see? A separate economic zone would be a bloody good start, I think. Um, yeah. I think the, uh, the future of the islands, if they're going to go back to an agrarian economy, is it can't survive the Australian economic level. Yeah. And I think that's probably true of, of many areas, you know, that this multi-speed economy is mm. showing it worse and worse. Yeah, and that's affecting these islands as well. Oh, very much so. Like, uh, you know, I think it's impossible for a tradesman to uh, afford a house in this territory. Yeah. Because people have got a lazy cash in Perth, I'll buy an investment property in, in Cocos Islands yeah. and blow the market out of water. You know? Really? Where do you see tourism fits into all this? It's a beautiful place to be, and it's a beautiful place to come to, and it's a great place for a holiday. And so tourism is an obvious, uh, obvious mm. answer, but um, the, the government do not make it easy. You know, they, mm. they change their policies, they change the flight frequencies, they change the flights, they change the plane, they change the policies, yeah. they change their land release programs. It goes on and on. It's just too hard sometimes, isn't it? Well, John Clooney's Ross, thank you very much for your time this evening. Really appreciate it. For great places to stay and things to do on Cocos Keeling Islands, all you have to do is visit the Cocos Keeling Islands Visitor Centre website at www.cocos-tourism.cc and their excellent team will do the rest. John Alwyn Jones reporting for Global Travel Media TV on location from Cocos Keeling Islands, brought to you by the Cocos Keeling Islands Visitor Centre and Virgin Australia.